Hey y'all, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Tonight for supper, we're gonna have fried chicken tenders. And so, I am getting some stuff ready. I've got um, some people coming by here to give me a quote on something. And so I wanted to get some things done. I don't know how long they'll be here. So I wanted to get some things done ahead of time. And so I'm just going to bring you along while we do this. And the main thing is going to be the fried chicken tender. So stay tuned for all of that. Okay, so let me get you turned down here. I've got, I started pouring it up and I thought, well, I'll just bring them. These are my home canned green beans. Uh, I'm just about out. I'm so thankful it is getting close to um, garden time because I need to replenish my green beans. So all I'm going to do to this is I'm going to put a little bit of oil, a little bit of just a dash of garlic and a dash of sugar and we're just going to, I'm just going to have those ready to start going um, for later. I don't usually add salt because when I can it, I always put a teaspoon of salt in there. So, um, I don't, I don't usually salt it at this point and, um, we'll just let them salt it at the table when they're served. So I'm just going to set this aside. It's poured up and ready. Whoop! I'm spilling water everywhere. Did y'all see that? Oh my goodness. I spilt water everywhere. Okay, I don't edit any of that out because let me tell you, if you work in your kitchen and you've never spilt something or done something like that, then you're not a real cook. You just, I don't know what you are, but you're not a real cook if you haven't ever made a mess. So, <laughs> um, so I don't edit any of that out. I've got potatoes and we'll move them carefully. I put, I've, I've submerged them in water just because I don't want them to turn brown. Um, when it gets closer to time for supper, I'll slice them up. I just wanted to get them peeled and in water so they wouldn't turn brown, so I'd be ready to slice them up. We're going to have mashed potatoes. We're going to have fried chicken tenders, green beans, mashed potatoes, biscuits, and gravy. So, but today's about the chicken tender. So, I'll bring you back when it's time to really get things going. Okay, y'all. So, when I was deciding what to do for supper... I was going through the freezer to see what I had handy, and I saw a pack of the chicken tenderloins. I thought, okay, we'll do chicken, and I was like, oh no, those tenderloins have that crazy tendon thing in it, and I have to cut it out. If you've seen my old video on this, I, I spend time cutting it out, and one of you guys told me about a hack that I needed to watch on YouTube about how to get that tendon thing out of the chicken. So I watched it this morning and we're gonna try it. I have not tried it. This package of chicken is just as it came. I've not moved any of them, but we're gonna try this hack and I'm gonna try it for the first time with you guys watching and we'll know whether this is a usable life hack or not. All right, sorry, I'm trying to get you guys situated where you can see good. All right, I'm just gonna grab this one right here. And it said what to do is that you're gonna need a piece of paper towel to hold it by. And you take a fork and you stick the fork, stick the tendon through the fork. Hang on, all right. And I'm gonna grab the tendon with my paper towel and I'm gonna pull down. Oh my goodness, y'all. <laughs> it just came right out and it left the meat. The tendon came out and left the meat. Let's try it again. Um, let's try it again, let's see here. I'm just struggling getting it. There we go. All 
Oh my word, y'all. I really didn't realize that tendon was so big. That thing is huge. All right, one more time and then I'll just finish it up without y'all watching, but I want you to see one more time. That is crazy. Why have I not known about this before now? Okay, guys, I'm going to keep doing this. You know the hack works now. I'm going to keep um, detendinizing these. <laughs> and um, I'll see you back in just a minute. Y'all, that hack was amazing. I switched hands, and I just flew through them like crazy. So I've gotten all those nasty long, I didn't realize they were that long tendons out of every one of those um, chicken tenders. And so now we're ready to get our flour and our seasoning ready. Um, I'm going to get everything over here and I'll see you back in just a second. Okay, so let's talk about the breading that's going to go on this, the, the flour dredge. So I always use when I fry just about anything. I can't think of anything right off that I don't fry in self-rising flour. Now you can use all-purpose, but I always use self-rising. I think it gives it a little bit of a crunch, um, a little bit more of a crunch than um, the all-purpose. Now I always add in this, I'm, this is going to be about a teaspoon of baking powder. And to me, that just adds an airiness to the crunch, like a fluffiness to the crunch. All right, so to this, I'm going to sprinkle in some paprika. And I really do the paprika mainly just for color, just to give it a pretty, give the chicken a, just a real pretty color. All right, and to that, I'm going to add in some ranch dressing mix. And I am going to put just a little bit more paprika in there. Now you could also add onion powder, garlic powder, whatever you want. I'm stopping there. And I'm going to turn my attention over here to our chicken tenders. I don't know if you guys can see them. I'm going to pull it this way. And I'm just going to salt and Okay, guys, so I did edit that blooper out. I had the whole, the peppercorn, the pepper grinder out and was going to grind fresh pepper on it and all the peppercorns spilled out on top of the chicken. So, <laughs> so I did edit that blooper out. All right, so I'm just going to flip it over. <laughs> it's so funny. Ah, I'm glad I can laugh. So if you see any big chunks, it's the peppercorns that came out. All right, and we're going to pepper this side and salt this. And that pepper is out gone. All right, and we're going to re-salt it on this side as well. Okay. We're going to bring our dredge over here, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, normally I drizzle mine in a little bit of um, buttermilk. I'm not going to do that today. We're just going to skip that step, and um, and I would have done it before I seasoned it anyway. So um, let's get in here in this flour mixture, 
and I press it in good. And then I let it sit for a little while before I'm ready to fry. So we're just gonna lay those right here. And I'll be sure I'm pressing that stuff in good. And I don't really worry about shaking off any of the excess because the more that's on there, the more crunch and crust you're going to have. Um, I don't know why I didn't do buttermilk this time. I always do buttermilk, but um, I was just in a hurry, I guess. Um, had my visitors come and I think I just got sidetracked. All right, well, I'm gonna keep doing this and I'm gonna get my oil on and get it good and hot and ready to go. And then we'll be ready to fry these babies up in just a few minutes. I'll bring you back in just a second. Okay guys, in my pan, I've added oil. I didn't have quite enough oil, so I took a scoop of Crisco and added to it. That's what's melting away. And I just pinch off a little bit of the chicken breader and drop in here. And it sizzled a little bit, but it's not quite hot enough. I don't, I want it hotter than that before I put my chicken in. So I'm gonna let it get a little bit hotter and we'll test it again. Okay guys, we're gonna try it again with a little bit of the dough. And um, then I still, if I'm not still quite sure, I'll start with just a little small piece of chicken. I st if you see it floating around there, I'm still not sure it's 100% ready, but we're gonna go in. Let's go in with a small piece of chicken first. Yeah, that's good. Right, we're gonna let them go for about three minutes on this side and then we'll flip them over do for another three minutes and then we'll be getting them out I'm gonna get a plate with some napkins on it and ready to get them out when it's time okay guys so let's turn them over to the other side let them cook a while on the other side Now, I have turned my burner down to approximately, um, like a medium high. Now, I could definitely get more in here, but I'm not going to. So, we're going to leave it for about two to three minutes on this side, and then we'll get them out. Okay, y'all, it's time to get them up. I'm going to put them on this plate just briefly, just in order to transport them over here. Y'all, I really wish I'd have dredged them in buttermilk. I don't know why I forgot that. But they're still going to be delicious. Okay, and real quick, what I'm going to do is let me turn you guys down. I'm going to lay them on this rack right here because I don't want them to get soggy where the oil is draining. So I'm just gonna lay them out on this rack while I fry the other bunch. Now they are some kind of beautiful, let me tell you. So let's get this other batch in. We're gonna let 
I think I need to turn my oven up just a, I mean my stove up just a little bit. We're going to be eating good tonight, y'all. There we go. Bring you back in just a little bit. Yum. Not to chew off. Okay, guys, there is the chicken. And Bryant says that even though I forgot the buttermilk, it's still delicious. So that just goes to show you, if you want fried chicken and you don't have buttermilk, you can still do it. So let's get started on the gravy. Okay, guys, this is Bryant's grandma's bowl, and this is always our gravy bowl. So let me tell you what I've done is I've poured up the grease, but I've left some of the brown bits in here. And I I scooped up about a half a cup of the grease. And we're going back in with that grease and we'll get those brown bits too. All right, I'm gonna turn my burner back on. Now you can use water or milk or whatever you want. I'm gonna use milk. Um, and whatever amount of grease you use, you need to use the same amount of flour. So I've got my burner getting hot again. So I want to use about a half a cup of flour, and I'm using all-purpose flour. And I'm just going to stir that around. And I'm going to cook that and mix in those good brown bits and cook the flour for a good little bit before I get ready to add the um, milk in. You want to get that flour taste out of it, and the only way you get it out of it is by cooking it. Here comes Jude Bug. I'm making? I'm making gravy. Mm -hmm, gravy. Yeah. Here, don't okay. get up here. No, it's hot, baby. It's hot. I can I can't hold you right now. Let me get the gravy made and then I'll hold you, okay? Okie dokie. All right. We're just going to let that brown real good. Judah wants a gummy. I'm going in. Probably starting with two cups of milk, but probably going to use more. And I just let this come to a boil until it starts thickening. Now, now is the time you want to add your flavor, your, your seasoning. So you definitely want to salt and pepper heavily here. You come in to help me? That's probably hot. It is Alright. I'm just scraping down any of those brown bits I see. I need some more of that. And as it just gets too thick, you just add a little bit more milk. You can heat that? And remember, you it, can thick stop there. it thickens as it cools as well. Yeah. That's a good gravy thickness right there, don't you? Lift it up and see how it looks on the. I can't really see on the whisk. There you go. <laughs> and don't run, just totally run off the fork. All right. Ready? Yep, will you pour it up for me? Yeah, right. yeah I'll set it right in the middle. Take your whisk and mom to get all that out. I'll let you do it. Caroline is calling Leslie in there because Levi appears to be crawling. It's fixing to crawl. Yeah, so. We missed it, Caroline says. It's okay. We'll catch it on the rebound. Catch it on the rebound. 
All right, I'm gonna set this over here. Or as we said, the farming pastor's wife on the rewatch. Bring the camera over here so you can taste it. Look, I got a greasy mess to clean up. How's that gravy look? Looks delicious. Looks delicious. Do you have a... Just turn, if you wanna see the food. Yep. All right. Which one, you gonna dip some chicken in the gravy? <laughs> okay, okay. You got any biscuits ready yet? Uh, they're in the oven. They're not quite ready yet. Not quite ready. Let's come back when we got a biscuit. Okay, yeah, we need biscuits for gravy. We'll come back with a biscuit. Okay, guys, here they are. They would have been a lot more crunchy and fluffy with batter had I done them in buttermilk. But they are still absolutely oh delicious. Yes, Judah wants some more. He says, I want some more, Mommy. Y'all, I just took a bite of that chicken. I don't even miss the buttermilk. I mean, I kind of miss the crunch, but the flavor is unbelievable. It is so good. So let's see what Brian thinks. Judah, is everything yummy? Yeah. Say phenomenal. Loud. Say it really loud. Say it's phenomenal. Loud. <laughs> I don't know. Say it again. <laughs> that, that, that was Judah's interpretation of phenomenal. And there's little Levi over there. Hey, Levi. Yeah, hey He's guys. waiting on some taters. He's yeah, wanting some potatoes. Huh? All right. Yeah, ice is in there. Right, Brian's going to. He's getting, his, here. getting some gravy. Right over them biscuits. Are those formula ale biscuits? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Right. Brian likes his gravy thick. I like it thick. Right. I'm gonna put a little gravy right here on the end of yeah. that chicken right there, okay? You guys see that right there? How's that look? Yeah. Put a little salt right there. Yeah. Normally I don't use a lot of salt. Pepper. I want some more. You want some more? He Judah wants some more. All right, guys, here we go. We've right already now. said the blessing. Oh, right. no, we haven't. You're just doing a taste. Just a taste. And then we'll I say want some more. All right, hang on. Here we go, right here. I want some more. Very good. Is that phenomenal? Very, phenomenal. Very, very good. <laughs> you can't beat southern fried chicken. All right, guys. We are going to say the blessing. Hey, do you guys know where the first chicken was fried at? Where was the first chicken fried at? In Greece. <laughs> waka, waka, waka. Wah, wah, wah. Right. Yeah, look, Levi, that's my sentiment. Oh, no, he's clapping. He was crying, <laughs> then he went to clapping. All right, we're going to pray. Y'all ready? Yes, let's All pray. Right. Let's say the blessing. Say blessing, Judy. Where? Get Papa's hand. All right, here we go. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Bless it to our bodies. Be with us, all of our needs. Lord, may you continue to have your hand upon our family. And these are friends in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you for joining here on the Farming Pastor's Wife. You got this great southern fried chicken, gravy, creamed potatoes, or if you guys say mashed potatoes and green beans. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, hit the like, the thumbs up, and uh, we appreciate all your support. All right, guys, you saw it right here in the Farming Pastor's Wife. God bless you all. Good night. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. What? I want some more. He wants some more.